How's it going everyone? Wanted to do a quick video to talk about the wiring for the swap that I'm doing here. And uh, just a little background, the swap that I'm doing is a <clears throat> four liter inline six fuel injected engine out of a 2001 Jeep Cherokee. And we're swapping it into a 1990 Jeep Wrangler. So 2001 XJ four liter into a, 2000, or into a 1990 YJ that had the 4.2 carbureted engine. And the reason I wanted to put this video together is that the more common swap is to use an older four liter out of an older XJ, so 96 and earlier. And a couple of reasons people do that. One, those engines are a little bit easier to get your hands on because people aren't still driving the Jeeps. And the other reason is that <clears throat> those engines, the wiring on them is a little bit more uh, plug and play for a YJ harness. So the wiring on a 98 and newer XJ, they changed some of the color coding, they changed a couple of where the wires are going. So I'd like to do a video to sort of illustrate what we've done and which wires go where. I wasn't able to find anything definitive when I was doing a search online as to how to make these two harnesses together. So it felt like it was pertinent to do a video. So a couple of things to, to notice off the bat. One is if you're starting this swap, it can be a little intimidating. Uh, and one of the main reasons is you've got a ton of wires coming out of your out of your YJ harness here, right? I mean, it's just spaghetti. And you've also got a ton of wires that go into the back of your XJPDC. So what you need to keep in mind before you stress yourself out is that the majority of these wires ran that engine and you're not using that engine anymore. The other thing is the majority of the wires going into the PDC sort of work in a closed loop. And what I mean by that is that the majority of the wires coming out of that fuse panel or out of the power distribution center don't plug into the YJ really at all. They run to various sensors on your four liter motor and then in turn they also run over to your computer. So a substantial portion of the wires that are in that PDC, you don't need to worry about touching them. You don't need to unplug them. You don't need to worry about splicing them into the YJ harness. They come out of the PDC, they come over to the computer, they go back, they come out of the PDC, they go to a sensor, they come back, you get the idea. So what I'd like to sort of illustrate is that when you're doing this swap, you're really boiling down to four wires that you need in order to get things to run. And it's, it makes a lot of sense if you think about it. First wire that you've got to have is you've got to have power coming out of the PDC and going into the ignition switch. If you think about it, that makes sense. You've got power that's coming out of the PDC, so power from the battery, and that power goes into the ignition switch. So the ignition switch then has the power that it can send to the starter. And then when you've started the engine and your key has switched back into the run position, it can continue sending that power out to the various items that need power in order to keep the engine running. So the first wire that you need is power. Second wire that you need now comes from the ignition switch, it goes back over to the PDC, and that's your start wire. That's the wire that's going to be engaged. It's gonna be carrying 12 volts only when you have the key in the start position, so when you're cranking over. Third wire that you need to have coming out of the, excuse me, out of the ignition switch is your start run. That wire is hot at start and at run. So if you think about it, it's gonna run things like your fuel pump, it's gonna run things like your gauges, so that when you've got the key in the start position, it's hot, obviously you want your fuel pump running when you're trying to start the car. When you're in the run position on the key, it's also hot because that fuel pump has to stay running. And then the fourth wire that you need is obviously to run that fuel pump. And you can do, I'm doing the fuel pump as an independent fourth wire, if you'd like, you can use the existing fuel pump relay that's in the PDC, but for my purposes, we're going to do it as an independent wire. So <clears throat> let's start by identifying those three wires coming off of the XJ harness. So if you did this correctly and you've pulled the four liter out of the XJ, you've got the entire engine side harness. That means you've got the computer, the three main plugs that go into the computer. You've got this massive connector, which it's a great idea to keep this for a number of reasons. This is your C100 connector. It's got a ton of wires coming out of the back of it, and we'll touch on those in a moment. And what I did was also keep 
the two connectors that come through the firewall on the passenger side of the XJ that connect to the uh, jumper box or junction box, excuse me. They're two connectors. They're right next to each other on the loom. They look like this. You don't need the junction box. You don't need really anything that's inside the car, but you do need all of these items. And you can see these went through the firewall on the XJ, went in under the glove box on the, on the passenger side of the Cherokee and plugged into the back of the junction box. And the reason that you want to pay attention to these three connectors, your C100 and the two that were coming out of the junction box, whose names I forget at the moment, is because those are where your main three wires are and where you'll be picking them up. You can pick them up back over at the PDC if you wanted to. In fact, you could pull out the wiring loom and just do jumpers from there straight to your YJ harness. But I think it's a little bit cleaner to sort of keep the original um, wiring in there. So let's start with the C100 connector. This is where you're picking up the power from the PDC, from the battery, and bringing it into the YJ harness. So and I've already clipped this to make my splice, but you can sort of see here the large red wire, which makes sense because again, we're talking about the power from the battery. The large red wire on the back of the C100 connector, which I believe is in cavity C6, C6 or C1. You can double check that on in your factory service manual and I'll put the correct pin out in the comments. Um, that is your main battery in, okay? That's where when the XJ was connecting to this and running all of the gauges and everything in its dashboard, this is where the power comes in. So we've gone ahead and clipped that wire. We're gonna make our splice right here. And the next question to answer is, which wires on the YJ harness need to pick that power up? And the answer is there are three. And for the most part, they are pretty obvious. There is one minor thing to keep in mind. But what you'll be looking for are three wires out of the YJ harness. And you can see they come right in to the engine compartment there on the passenger side connector. And these wires are two that are solid red, no tracers, and they're pretty thick wire. I believe they're 14 or 12. And then the third is red with a white tracer right there. Okay. And what you'll be doing is taking these three, joining them in, and you can do this however you'd like. If you want to solder them, if you want to go get a little, you know, four way connector, you can do that as well. But these three need to join the battery here. Okay. So that's your first connection. That's how you're getting power from the battery through the fuse box and over and into the ignition switch. Okay. Now, next we're going to talk about the starter. So the starter, starter is only engaged. And so the starter relay is only engaged when the key is all the way forward in the start position. So when you click that key forward, you're opening up the switch and you're pushing power across the ignition switch on green. And this is all in the YJ FSM. So if you have it and you can look at the pinouts for this connector, go do it and double check yourself. But I, I have, you know, I've owned these out. This is only hot when you when you're in the start position. So this is uh, this is your starter wire. Let me see if we can't focus a little bit better there. There we go. All right, so green, solid green, no tracer. Again, this is a pretty pretty substantial gauge wire compared to everything else that's in the engine bay. It's probably a, again a 14. Um, so that is that's your start coming off of the YJ harness. Okay. So that solid green needs to go to yellow with a red tracer. And just to sort of prove things out, if you were to come over to the back of your PDC, and it's very difficult to see because they cram so much in here, but you can take a look for yourself. If you come over to the back of your PDC and you find yellow with a red tracer, yellow with a red tracer is going into the back of your starter relay. And it's the it's going into the back on the port that trips the relay. So if you were to pull this relay out and you were to hit 
you were to ground it out and then hit the same pin that is yellow red on the back with 12 volts, the relay will engage, it'll, it'll tick over. So again, thinking through it, we want to trip that relay coming off of green when the key is in the start position. So you want to go green to yellow red. So that's yellow with a red tracer on the XJ harness. You remember this connector from a moment ago. This is one of the ones that went to the junction box through the firewall, yellow red. Okay, this is where that, that switch would have picked up, or rather that circuit would have picked up in the XJ harness. So you have yellow with a red trace right here. You can connect that to green, just so. And once you've done that, you'll have your nice starter circuit that goes through to your relay, ticks things over just to, to kick your starter. Now the third wire, the third circuit we talked about was the start run circuit. And I call it start run because that's the way it's referenced in all of the FSMs. It also makes sense because it is both on and hot during your start sequence and it also stays hot as you're running the vehicle. And for that one, you are looking for solid yellow on the YJ harness. Okay, solid yellow coming out of that same connector here at the bulkhead on the YJ. I have ohmed this out. By ohmed it out, I mean I've put it on the meter and it's hot both when the key is in the run position and also when the key is in the start position. So yellow is what you're looking for there. Again, this is backed up by the FSM. You can double check me if you'd like, but this is the one that you need to connect over to the XJ side. Now, which wire do you need on the XJ side of things? Well, we're running out of storage here for the videos. Hold on just a moment. We'll pick this up in just a moment. 